Hello everyone. Since I have a small but necessary adjustment in my last video of how to wire the PID controller. And also many questions about installing dual or multiple heating elements. I think this is a good opportunity for me to make a new video about it. Hope this will help you all in your projects. Please be noticed that. I am not an expert in this. There might be better way for it. But I've done a lot of researches and successfully built tested and run my DIY oven with the PID controller so far. So I'm quite confident with it now. Please check out my other videos on how I built it if you have some time. Without further ado, let's have a look at it right now. We have here one PID controller, one heating element, and a second heating element, one solid state relay, and a second solid state relay for the second heating element, one switch for the first heating element, and a second switch for the second heating element. One thermocouple. One high capacity plug. One automatic circuit breaker switch. And finally the alarm bell. Now, if you look at the PID, there is a diagram beside it. This diagram shows us exactly which pins on the PID should we wire to each element. And for now, let's just wire one heating element first. Let's just forget about the second heating element for a few minutes. As you may need only one in your project, so let's assume that our high capacity plus over here represent our power source. Here I have blue line and orange line. Even though, as we all know, this is alternating current. So there is no positive or negative here. But in order to make it easier for us to follow. Let's just assume the blue line is negative, and the orange line is positive from now on. So at the very first. I run these two lines through in 20 amps automatic circuit breaker. It depends on how many amps your heating element is going to draw from the power source. My heating element draws around 10 amps. So this 20 amp automatic circuit breaker should be fine for me in this case. Alright. First thing we want to do is to power our PID controller. This PID can run directly with 85 volts, or up to 265 volts. We now look at number 8, and number 9 pins on our PID. Just simply wire those two orange and blue lines to number 8, number 9. Again, this is alternating current, so there is no right or wrong wire here. But let's agree and assume number 8 is negative and number 9 is positive. If we turn the circuit breaker on, the PID is on, and running on its own now. Okay. Now we want to power our heating element. So from the negative blue line, we just simply wire it with one electrode of our heating element. Like you see in the video. And for the remain positive orange line, Instead of wiring it directly to our positive electrode of the heating element, we run it through our solid state relay first. By connect it to pin number 1 on the solid relay. And from there, at pin number 2 of the solid relay, we can now connect it to our positive electrode of the heating element. Okay. Now your heating element will get hot whenever the solid relay is on. At the moment, there is nothing to power and control our solid state relay yet. If you turn on the circuit switch now, the heating element won't get hot. In another word, the solid state relay is a switch, which runs by electricity. Not by our finger. So this is when the PID comes in. The PID will tell the solid relay, when to be on. And when to be off. To do this. We now look at number 10 and number 11 pins of the PID. Notice that number 11 has a positive sign by it, so number 10 is negative. Simply wire number 10 to the pin which has a negative sign on the solid relay. In this case is number 4. And before connect number 11 to the positive pin of the solid relay. Let's run it through the switch, like in the video. This is the adjustment I want you all to have, compared to my last posted video. This switch will either turn the relay on, or turn the relay off, manually. When the solid relay is off, our heating element will be off too. That's what we want, don't we? That's it. The PID controller will now automatically control our heating element through the solid relay. Now we only have to wire the thermocouple and the alarm bell to the PID. And it is extremely easy. We now look at number 5 and number 6 on the PID. They have positive sign and negative sign next to each number. Just simply wire them to our positive and negative electrodes of the thermocouple. Just simple as that. Your PID can now read exactly what temperature your thermocouple measured. Okay. Now to wire the alarm bell. Let's have a look at number 1 and number 2. 
Think number one and number two is a switch. Just like in the diagram shows. Simply connect one wire of the alarm bell to number eight. That's our negative line. And then we take number nine, which is our positive line. We wire it to number two first. And finally, connect number one pin to the remain wire of the alarm bell. As I mentioned before, number one and number two is acting as a switch here. That's it. We now completely wire our PID controller with all of our elements. Not difficult at all. Like I said at the beginning of the video, isn't it? All right. How about wiring dual heating elements or multiple heating elements? Let's do it. It's actually not complicated as you may thought. Just do exactly the same like what you did with the first element. We are making a parallel circuit for those heating elements here. So, first we wire the negative line from our power source to the negative electrode of our second heating element. And then we wire the positive orange line to the positive electrode of our second heating element. Of course through the second solid state relay. You are right. Just like we did before. Now, you might already know the next step. We wire number 10 to negative pin of the second solid relay. And number 11 to the positive pin of the second solid relay. You are right again. Through our second switch. And that's it. This circuit has been serving me flawlessly for months. As you might notice, our outcome voltage does not change. In my case it is 220 volts. The resistance of each heating element cannot be changed. In my case it is 22 ohms each. So the only changing number here is our total current. In this case, this two heating elements will draw around 20 amps from the power source. Which is quite high. Please make sure you have suitable power supply, circuit breaker, and electric cables when doing this. The solid relay does not require much electricity to run, so our PID can easily handle two or three or even four solid relays at a time. All it has to do is sending signal, and small electricity to tell the solid relay to either be on, or off. And last but not least, people been asking me what I use to connect between the heating elements electrodes, and the power supply cables. The answer is, the ceramic terminal blocks, or high temperature ceramic connectors. And also, I used high temperature insulated fiberglass wire. Please check out my description for more details. And that's it for today video. I really hope this can help you, more or less in your projects. Thank you very much for watching my video. Please subscribe to support my channel if you like it. Thank you and see you in my next video.